Hello friend and welcome to the slowest sim driving channel on YouTube. I'm Grandpa Goes Gaming and we are getting topless at Dragon Trail Gardens. This is a handicap race for topless cars. If you like this kind of content then please remember to give a thumbs up, subscribe and let's get racing. The rules are simple, we all set a, uh, a representative time for our cars and then McFlurry works hard on the maths to figure out the uh, the starting order and how staggered the cars need to be. Fat Cat Gaming, they shouldn't be on the track, but there he is anyway. Uh, so Tweeman starts first in his Mazda and this is a car that has quite a big um, head start because this is by far the slowest car in the field. That doesn't mean he can't win because he's got that head start. So the first race second race and third race we really do refine the times so that we can have a for all the beans final race with perfect lap times and uh, and perfect staggered start you see Tweetman a long around the track before anybody else has even started that master definitely underpowered compared to the other cars on the track uh, still nobody else has pulled away so Tweetman how much of a head start do you need this is crazy but it's a, it's a beautiful livery he's got on that car. Uh, I'm not sure if Tweetman made it himself. I'm sure he'll let us know in the comments if he's feeling up to it and not if he's not. So he's approaching the staging area. It could be that Tweetman goes a lap up before anybody else has even started the race, which is absolutely crazy. Okay, I think we're about to see our second car pull away now, and it does indeed. It's McFlurry in the more highly tuned Mazda, which even sounds like it's got a, an engine swap, but maybe that's the car behind it, which is Kevman's Ferrari, the classic P60. The next topless car to go, and then Chris Char is away. Chris Char in the BMW, with a spoiler as well. Oh, Chris, what are you like? Next car to leave is Fat Cat Gaming, who's got the crossbow. He's away, that's a very, very quick topless car. And the last car away is going to be myself. I still haven't started because the, uh, the, the fan car is a bit ridiculous. So let's see where everybody's in relation to each other. Here's Tweetman in first place, who's just gone around the first corner. And Kevman and McFlurry are fighting amongst one another and getting penalties in second and third. But it's Kevman's Ferrari which is currently pulling away from McFlurry's Mazda. I should expect it to. I'm surprised they started so close together actually. But they did. It looks like McFlurry's about to get past though. Thanks to that, uh, that penalty. The two of them have occurred. 1.5 seconds means that McFlurry's hit the barrier. Three seconds means that uh, Kevman's hit the barrier twice, which isn't a great start. I can see by the minimap that the fan car is now away. So hopefully we'll be seeing that soon. We're going to stick here because these two will most certainly be having a battle on track. These are the two closest cars together. There is a car quite close behind though. Is that Chris Char? It is Chris Char in his BMW who's coming to join the scrap. He's caught up faster than he should have done because of the penalties that the drivers incurred. Surely Kevman's going to put a move on that modified MX-5 very soon. He needs to get away from McFlurry. Oh no! McFlurry's actually off. Oh McFlurry, what are you like? <laughs> All kinds of contact there. McFlurry and Kevman uh, having a little bit of a, a play around I think with this being the first race but you know everybody wants to win so they're still trying to win whether this is for all the beans or not here comes Chris Jar in the BMW a lot more straight line speed than that Mazda in fact it looks big enough to eat the Mazda Chris Jar there picking a car that definitely suits his driving style by the look of that he's through into third place and now that BMW is going to go chasing off after Treatment's Ferrari Nice to see Racing Rebels livery on Chris's car. Thank you very much for those, uh, those decals you've added there. Always good to see. And of course the Amigos Racing Team logo on that car as well. So 
here we go, Chris Jar onto the back of the Ferrari. But it does look like these cars have very similar kind of uh, performance. That classic Le Mans car there. Hard to believe that a car like that is, what, 60 years old? And it's trying to hold its own against that BMW. Well, power to it. That's what we love about Gran Turismo. Get these cars on track together. Chris Jai in the slipstream as we begin lap four of seven. I know it says seven laps on the counter. It's just six racing laps because we use the first lap to line up the cars and uh, get everybody ready to start, get people out of the way in case a car comes through. It's all kind of complicated, but McFurry deals with it all and you know we thank him for that. These handicap racers are his brainchild. Chris well, he's definitely in the Kedman slipstream, but he's not cruising up the way I thought he might. But I think Chris Jarre could be a contender for victory here in these races. It's looking good so far. Perhaps we'll have to wait until the straight, though, to actually uh, do anything with his McFlurry. I mean, all kinds of trouble getting the power down in his Mazda. It's squirming like a, well, like a squirmy thing, really. Chris now right tucked up behind Kevman. It's another car that it looks like Chris's car could eat. And that's it, Kevman lets him through. There's nothing more he can do. So Chris Char needs to go and hunt down Tweetman, but Tweetman is was a long way out in front. He had an enormous head start. Despite setting a great qualifying time, Fat Cat gave me not quite as fast as perhaps we'd hoped and that uh, that chaparral is definitely closing in you can hear it in the background and there it is closing in on lap five so a possible move on here for position it's got the mini map the cars are all starting to bunch up together with the crossbow looking very vulnerable to the grandpa mobile behind here we go is there anything that Fat Cat Gaming can do? Not really. I think his time might need adjusting a little bit to protect him more from the fan car, but uh, it's one of the reasons we run these races. Get those times just right, ready for the last race. That's a cramp up to fifth, and there's somebody up ahead. That looks like McFlurry. You've got to assume that a Chaparral can catch up with a Mazda, right? Well, you know, these handicap racers, that's how they are. The uh, the cars are all very different and they all start at very different times to make sure that we do have a race on our hands and not just uh, a procession. Up through the Essers and McFlurry in his squirm mobile definitely looking a little bit vulnerable to the, uh, the fan car behind him. Here it is. It's raw horsepower versus ridiculous amount of aero and I think Danforce is going to win the day McFlurry a sitting duck for the Grandpa Mobile speaking of sitting ducks Tweetman has started the final lap of the race but Chris Jar is right behind him well I'd say right behind him he's, uh, he's in the same corner there he is Chris Jar's BMW coming to gobble up that Mazda Tweetman's car by far the slowest thing we've had on a racetrack for some time. Here we go, Chris Char, Tweetman, the same colour scheme, but definitely not the same power plant. I don't think there's anything that Tweetman can do about this, because Chris is just going to roll right around him. Here we go, oh, Tweetman defends his position, but it's not enough. It's not enough as Chris Char shoots up in the background there. Kevman's Ferrari getting passed by the Chaparral. The fan car using that aero to its advantage. And Tweetman shouldn't be much of an issue, I think, in that. Uh, I think it was a stock Mazda. Bonk. Give him a bit of a push. Go on, get around that corner, Tweetman. Should have bomb drafted him, really. That would have been hilarious. And well, just Chris Charles to beat. Chris Charles' car's fast, but is it as fast 
as the 2J. I don't think it is. It's going down to the last corner and Chris is out wide. Oh, Chris just out breaks himself there. Gives him perhaps too much space. And the first race goes to Grandpa. Then Chris. Has to keep on doing to get third. No, Kevman has just snuck through before the finish line to get third place. Two man fourth. And McFlurry, well, he had some real handling difficulties in that beast. Fat Cat Gaming, oh, well, couldn't quite put in the performance that he did in qualifying, but uh, maybe he can pick that up for race two. Speaking of race two, let's get to it and let's see if this car can do the business. Okay, race two, and Tweedman's already underway. Fat Cat Gaming starting when he was supposed to this time. McFlurry in third. Looks like he's going to just blitz past Fat Cat Gaming, so perhaps McFlurry's time needs adjusting. Hmm, seems a little bit uh, sus to me. Maybe Fat Cat Gaming can come back at him. Kevman's Ferrari is underway as well. Chris Charles' BMW has just left the staging area. So my Chaparral fan car is going to just sit there for a while, minding its own business. McFlurry not dropping Fat Cat Gaming as I thought he would. But he's still having some uh, little handling problems with that. And power to Fat Cat Gaming. I don't think I've ever seen anybody drive the, uh, the crossbow in such a, a balanced and stable way. Whenever I try and drive it, it just spins round and round. Oh, but it looks like Fat Cat there just outbreak himself a little bit. Give McFlurry an advantage. That's great, it was a battle from the get-go. And they're now approaching the staging area where there's still a grandpa sat wondering what to do. He's just left the staging area, so I'm underway. Oh, Fat Cat Gaming. A little bit too much of the loud pedal on the, on the uh, exit of that corner, and he just understeered straight off. But Fat Cat not letting McFlurry out of his sights this time. This is more like the sort of time that Fat Cat should have left in the first race. But I think he just wasn't paying attention. You know, you sit there, you wait for the timer, we're in the voice chat, it gets a bit silly, and before you know it, you should have left 30 seconds ago. These things happen, right? McFroy doing his best to get away from Fat Cat Gaming. Oh, bit of oversteer, bit of understeer, bit of oversteer. The car on completely the wrong line, and that's put Fat Cat right on his back. Got a slipstream. We could. Be, uh, we could be seeing McFlurry about to lose second place. This Fat Cat looks around the outside. McFlurry defends his line. Fat Cat goes onto the grass. Interesting tactic. Didn't work. But it shows that McFlurry can be vulnerable to little mistakes. McFlurry's car drifting all over the place. Probably too much power. And maybe the suspension is a little bit too stiff. And it just looks a real handful. So, credit to McFlurry for being able to actually keep that thing going. I think I'd have binned it by now. But he's starting to gap Fat Cat, I think. Just behind the McFlurry Fat Cat gaming battle, Chris Char is on the straight and he's approaching Kevman. Kevman's on the entrance to the corner that uh, Fat Cat is on the exit of. So the cars are all bunching up very nicely. Look at that car. It's gorgeous. It looks gorgeous. It sounds gorgeous. It's gorgeous. I'm not a fan of Ferraris, but that one is magnificent. There's just something not Ferrari about it, apart from the sound. So what do you think is going to happen? Is Kevman going to get on the back of Fat Cat Gaming first, or is Chris Char going to get on the back of Kevman first? They're certainly all bunching up together. And we're not seeing any really big mistakes this time out. Kevin throwing that thing around. Pushing it with everything he's got. Which is apparently quite a lot. So here we go, on to the main straight. We've got Chris just there in the background. We've got Fat Cat Gaming there in the foreground. This is why we do the handicap races. So we can all bunch up together and have ridiculously different machines all compete on the same level. No BOP. Set it the way you want it and then just run it. 
and it looks as though Kevman is going to catch back cap before Chris catch, catches him, which of course is very important because he's going to want to buffer other cars for Chris to get past. And as you get towards the end of the race, of course you're facing faster cars, they're bunched together, it makes it more difficult. It's a real challenge. A challenge that these drivers are rising to very well, but Kevman edging closer and closer in that Ferrari to the crossbow in front of him for that four completely different cars all speculated differently all in the same shot what more could you ask for from sim racing Fat Cat Gaming not letting McFlurry get away he's hungry in this race and he's, he's doing the work on some main straights we can stay close enough we might even get a good slipstream to get past McFlurry He's going to have to do it quickly because Kevman is coming. And not only that, but Chris Char is coming as well. And Fat Cat Gaming alongside McFlurry and into second place. But can McFlurry get back underneath him? I think Fat Cat's gone a little bit wide. He has. Oh, he's gone a lot wide. Oh, no, he's doing so well. He's hit Kevman. Fat Cat and Kevman come together. Kevman's relatively unscathed. Oh, but Fat Cat Gaming, that was one of his best performances we've seen and it's just come crashing to an end on the penultimate lap Chris Char ahead of Kevman and he's uh, I think he's beginning to pull away Kevman being dragged along in the slipstream but I don't think it's going to be enough that BMW has been tuned to a mighty level by Chris McFlurry squirms and slides but there's nothing he can do to stop the onslaught of that BMW it's coming. He's great at drifting this thing. If this was a drifting competition, he would most certainly be winning. But that is Chris through into second place. All he's got to do now is catch up to Tweetman, who is currently on the main straight. Chris has got one lap left to do that. Even Kevman in the background drifting it, hanging that back end out. Let's not forget this ridiculous fan car that it's on the approach, just one corner away. Maybe we'll see the cars yet. Yeah, there's Kevman's Ferrari. It was of course delayed by the incident with um, with Fat Cat Gaming. It's a tricky place to pass here. But nevertheless, foot down. You can hear that beast roaring. Where's that Ferrari? There it is. Here's the Ferrari past the Ferrari, past the Mazda, into third place. A little bit wide there, there's only about half a lap left with which to catch the BMW up ahead. Oh, there is the BMW up ahead. Is this going to be another storming victory for Grandpa and his freaky fan car? Well, we're still going to get past Tweetman, who's just around this corner. Tweetman could block if he wanted to. Could make things difficult. He's having a, a good race actually in that Mazda. Imagine to stay ahead of, uh, of Chris but not stay ahead of the fan car unfortunately. Chris is approaching behind. Here he is. Can Tweetman clinch second place in the slowest car on the grid? It's going to be close. They're on the runs of the line now. I don't think he can. No. Fan car takes a big tree. Then it's Chris Char on the BMW. Tweetman just holds off the Ferrari of Kevman, then McFlurry's Mazda, and then Fat Cat Gaming again. Started out so well, and it all fell apart halfway through the race. Okay, the times are getting better now. Let's adjust the times a little bit more. See if we can have better head starts, and uh, let's see how that works out. Okay, this time McFlurry has started three seconds early because he managed to get a penalty on the uh, formation lap. Well done, McFlurry. And this is the final race for setting up the times. And oh, McFlurry drifting it beautifully around the first corner. Fat Cat Gaming ever present. Going to try to catch him up. Kevman once again right on their heels. And Chris Char in fifth. And me just sat there all lonely. No friends to play with. Tweetman already on to lap three, even though I haven't even started the race yet. Well, 
Good luck, Tweetman. This could be your race to win. Fat Cat definitely on a charge this time. He's pushing hard in the crossbow. Getting a good feel for it. He could be about to sweep straight into second place because McFurry's got a penalty to serve. And uh, three seconds is a big chunk of time. Fat Cat right behind him. So here we go. Here comes the pass. So all Fat Cat Gaming needs to do now to win is catch and pass Tweetman, who's virtually a lap ahead. And there's, well, another five laps to do it in, so maybe he can. Maybe Fat Cat Gaming can win this race. Maybe I spoke too soon because McFlurry is catching the crossbow. He's pulling out some great laps. But remember, the fastest lap from this race, if it beats the qualifying time, is going to change your, your starting order, your head start. The faster you go, the smaller your head start is. So this is, it's not about power, it's not about raw pace, it's about consistency. If you can consistently hit the times you set as your fastest time, you can win. And McFlurry, he's fast, he's got a great car, but can he be consistent in something so incredibly unstable? There's trouble brewing for Kevman on lap four in the shape of Chris Charles BMW, which is closing in. Second, third, fourth and fifth, all very close. If you look right in the middle of the minimap in the top right corner, those guys are very close together. There's only going to be what, three laps after this one. You can even hear the uh, the Ferrari in the foreground. So, Chris Jar having a good run. The fan car's out there somewhere, right at the back. Tweetman's Master's out there somewhere, right at the front. Kevman's Ferrari now onto the back of McFlurry's Mazda. There it is. Once again, Kevman doing his best to escape the, the clutches. Chris Char behind him and uh, that's not an easy car to drive that Ferrari it's a very pleasurable car to drive when you've got it, uh, got it tuned the way you like it when you're in the zone and Kevin they're going a little bit faster than he has previously so got to assume there's some sort of slipstream effect going on there Looks very tentative through there Kevin just chucking it in shows you the difference in, uh, in how the cars are set up Kevman looking for a way through, trying to get away from Chris Char, but he can't do it. McFlurry's blocking him. Kevman probably turning the air blue right now as he's forced to drop back. And there, there comes the BMW. I don't think there's anything that, uh, that Kevman can do about that BMW because we can look to the main straight. And in theory, that car will just fly past the Ferrari. Strange, strange string of words I've just said all in the same sentence. Oh, but here he comes. He's like going to wait for the main straight. He's going to go for the double left. It's going to be a double overtake. He's trying for it. He's trying for it. Yes, a double overtake in the double left. And Kevman gets past McFlurry. So those three cars inverted. Chris Char can now chase after Fat Cat Gaming. Chris Char closing in like a bloodhound on the crossbow. I'm sure that Fat Cat Gaming would dearly love to win this race. Oh, he's gone out wide. He got a problem. Uh, I don't think he's got a problem. No, I think Fat Cat just offline lost all his speed and Chris Char goes through just at the other end of the straight now in the double left hander is Tweetman and Chris Char is going to have one single lap to catch him and claim victory. We've still got no sight of the fan car. It's still a long way back. So Chris Char looks like he's he's on for it. Kevman trying to get the podium, but he's just outbraked himself there. Once again, Kevman go for the move. He's in fact got slipstream. Pulls out just before the first corner. Side by side. <laughs> Look at that new machinery versus old machinery. You love to see it. And this is a great battle between Fat Cat and Kevman. Who've raced together for a very long time. Oh, Fat Cat gets into the side of Kevman. Both cars managed to stay pointing in the right direction. 
and Kev is through I think Fat Cat Gaming perhaps backed off there aware that his move wasn't perhaps uh, as kosher as it could have been just a few corners left now and Chris Char homing in on race lead the tweet man in that uh, that cute little Mazda you're doing the business aren't you tweet man you just go for it you have fun it's, it's a great car to drive but Chris Char takes the lead of this race with just a few corners to go but here comes trouble in the form of this grandpa who's about to shoot past Fat Cat Gaming and presumably Kevman as well although we're getting blocked there a bit by Kevman it's all going to come down to the final straight Tweetman in second can he stay there? I think Chris Char's done it I think Chris Char's won the race, he has can Tweetman get second? <laughs> uh, Tweetman I think was going for the handbrake turn over the line there and it uh, caused him to lose second place oh but it's Chris Char who's the fastest so it's anybody's race we we'll go for all the beans so this is it we've refined the staggered start times as much as we possibly can unfortunately Fat Cat Games had to leave us but I'm sure it's still going to be just as spectacular if not more so in theory everybody drives perfectly consistently to the times they've been driving already tonight the cars should all end up on the same bit of tarmac at the end of the race for what we hope will be a photo finish so let's keep our fingers crossed for no incidents Kevman's away Chris Char's away I'm still sat waiting and Tweetman leads the race he's going to try and lead it to the end we're almost at the end of lap three and now one of the faster cars has caught sight of its prey Kevman's being hunted down by Chris Char, so things not quite going the way Kevman needed them to. Chris Char is definitely on the move. He's just entering the double left-hander as Kevman's just leaving the double left-hander. You'll see him in your shot in a moment. There he is, and we can see McFlurry in the distance as well. So they're going to have three laps here to fight it out. We've already seen Chris Char win. We know that this car can do it, we know that this car can beat the fan car and everything else on the track with that driver at its wheel. But without Fat Cat Gaming to battle against, this could be McFlurry's race as well because he's got nothing to slow him down but himself and his sheer lack of control over the rear of that car. And just for fun, let's see the speed difference between the 5th place fan car and the 1st place Mazda. Bye Tweetman. So there we go, the Grandpa Mobile is no longer a lap down. We've now got two and a half laps to get an entire lap back on Tweetman. Chris probably starting to feel a bit of Kevman's slipstream now and just get drawn in. But uh, there's time yet, there's, there's time for Chris to make a mistake or, or Kevman to find some speed he didn't realize he'd got. It's really anybody's race in this all the beans finale it's a little surprising that Kevman hasn't caught up with McFlurry yet but not surprising that Chris Char has caught up with the Ferrari look at the width of the wheels on that thing it's ridiculous Chris Char within less than a second of the Ferrari in front it looks like Kevman well this isn't your day sorry Unless, of course, Chris Char makes a mistake. That's something that doesn't happen very often at all. Coming through that double left-hander to go on to the main straight. We're about to start lap six, and Chris Char's going to have a massive slipstream from that Ferrari in front of him. You can see Kevman weaving to try and break the toe. But Chris Char is closer still. Two laps to go. Who's going to win? Well, if you know who's going to win the final race, drop it in the comments if you like, and we'll see if you were right at the end. It's a difficult place to catch and pass somebody. Not really a way through just there. Chris Char, very brave on the kerbs. Kevman just trying to keep that big back heavy thing in a line, but Chris Char going around the outside. That's it, up to third place. And now he can chase after McFlurry. And these guys have been steadily catching McFlurry as they've been pushing each other along. There he is in the distance. 
we approach the start finish cam sheet for the penultimate time Chris Char has most certainly got slipstream on McFlurry but that car is just so fast and straight line that McFlurry is driving he's got rocket fuel under the hood of that thing and look at him drifting trying to keep that back end in check he's down a little bit wide there of course while he's drifting he's not getting the power down he's not getting his acceleration and that's giving Chris Char a chance to just catch up with him and see oh there's a fan car right in the back of that picture he's hunting you down guys it's coming just looking for a way through and there it is let's chart up into second we've got a tweet man just around this corner but who's going to catch who first because it looks as though the chaparral is about to join the party as you can see on the mini map all the cars are together tweet man under threat from chris char chris is going to get past as quickly as he can protect himself from behind and that's it Chris Char it's the lead of the race with just two corners to go there's the fan car already in fourth now third now now second no yes second indeed but looking at the wrong car is it going to be a drag race to the line because I think I know who will win that it is going to be a drag race the Grand Palmobile heads for the start finish straight takes the checkered flag all the beans Chris Char second McFlurry third, then Kevman. Oh, tweet man. Get out and push. Yay me! That's a rare sight. Grandpa at the top of the table. We don't do these handicap races as an open lobby normally because they're quite complicated to uh, do the maths for. But if you want to come and join one, they're always themed differently. Click the link for the Discord. Come along. Have a race. I'm really chuffed to have won this. It was one heck of a challenge and I had to work hard for it. Thank you very much for watching this video and hopefully I'll see you again soon. Bye bye for now.